surface is water, yet we know very little of what lies beneath. Maybe this inner space doesn't excite people as much as outer space does. Twelve people have walked on the moon. Only two people have scuba dived deeper than a thousand feet. I bet you recognize Neil Armstrong, but not Nuno Gomez, world record holder for the deepest scuba dive. Jacques Cousteau said, from birth, man carries the weight of gravity on his shoulders. He is bolted to earth, but man has only to sink beneath the surface, and he is free. If you want to learn to scuba dive, your training will start in a pool, just like those astronauts training for the weightlessness of spacewalks, except regular people can become scuba divers. Unlike many other outdoors activities that make you feel one with nature, scuba diving makes me feel like a freak of nature, out of my element. It's the perfect hobby for misfits. No. Um, I love diving in coral reefs um, because they look like fantasy gardens. But these are not plants. A reef is made up of coral polyps, tiny animals that live in colonies. Each polyp has a stomach and a mouth. That's how you know it's an animal. Um, at the bottom, you can see the uh, limestone skeleton that they secrete to form the structure of the reef. They secrete their own skeletons. How cool is that? <laughs> Some of the larger animals make you feel as if you're about to be swallowed by an alien mothership. Manta rays with wingspans of 14 feet will swoop down right close to eat plankton close to you. We don't breathe underwater, um, so we use a regulator. Uh, number two there is the part that you put in your mouth like this. <laughs> And number uh, five is your air and depth gauge. Uh, we mostly control our depth through very mindful breathing. In, up, out, down. Until you find a sweet spot where you're just hanging, weightless. In an emergency, two divers can share one regulator. It also has an exhaust valve, so you can um, spit, uh, cough, or vomit through it without choking, and the fish will eat your puke. <laughs> okay, scuba is pretty safe. Worst thing that's ever happened to me was um, fire coral. If you touch it, your skin will burn for two days and itch for um, uh, two months. We use, um, to communicate underwater, we use hand signals. Now let me explain to you. Um, that one means okay. So, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. How much air do you have? 800 PSI. Let's go up. Okay. Sharks. Am I afraid of sharks? No, because out of more than 400 species of sharks, only four are widely known to attack humans. Look at how adorable that one is. <laughs> Snuggled up. So yes, I also dive because all the cute things. So that's a, that's a frogfish, and the baby frogfish is this size, and it looks like a little lump of clay that someone dropped on a rock. Pufferfish or porcupine fish are also very cute. Even cuter are baby pufferfish, but the cutest is a little angry or scared baby pufferfish who swims away from you, looking ridiculous. <laughs> now, <laughs> underwater, the underwater environment can be surreal. What may look like little Christmas trees is, in fact, a worm. It even comes in Christmas colors, as you can see. And um, the two crowns you see there is what they use for breathing. What may look like a pink blooming rose on a rock is a layer of sea slug eggs. These things are bizarre and exotic, but reef environments are very fragile. Coral is very sensitive to changes in ocean temperature. What you see there is bleached, stressed coral. Vibrant, healthy reefs are increasingly precious. So, none of you is ever going to travel to outer space. But by scuba diving, ordinary people can have extraordinary experiences. So, get out there, go and see what lies below, and even if you, if you don't, 
try in all the ways you can to preserve this inner space a little while longer, okay?